25 years after the outbreak of the cordyceps brain infection and 5 years after the events of The Last of Us, Ellie is now 19 years old. Ellie and Joel have settled down in Tommy's settlement, living in relative peace within a thriving community. However, constant threats from the weather, infected and groups of survivors lead to a tragic event in Ellie's life. Ellie embarks on a journey in a search for vengeance to carry out justice. As she hunts down those responsible, she is confronted with the traumatizing physical and emotional consequences of her actions. She is fueled by hate, which will be a major theme within the story, directly opposing the love from the previous game. I'm gonna find... and I'm gonna kill... Every last one of them. Let's take a step back. Ellie and Dina are going out on a daily expedition to survey the area and ensure the settlement's safety. For the first 50 minutes they chatted and bantered back and forth about plans, people they knew and relationships while checking in at a station and scavenging abandoned houses on their way to a supermarket. At one point Dina asked Ellie what she was planning to do that night and Ellie answered she had plans to watch a cheesy action movie with Joel, which drew a surprise reaction from Dina. Oh, Dina said, are you too cool? It's unknown if Ellie discovered Joel sacrificing humanity's future to save her, but the tension quickly dissipated. Before long they arrive at the supermarket, where things take a turn for the worse. Infected, the first type of enemy encountered, quickly gather on their position. However, Ellie and Dina manage to make it out of there alive. Other than runners, stalkers, clickers and bloaters, five years later shamblers are making an introduction. Providing an area of attack, the cloud of gaseous acid they create burns materials around it, burns your skin and blocks your view. It's yet unknown how this mutation could exist, but it has something to do with the environment and how much time has passed. With the supermarket cleanup complete, Ellie and Dina decide they were done with patrolling for the day and wanted to return to the settlement. Unfortunately, a blinding snowstorm picked up and the two got separated. Just when it seemed like all hope was lost, Dina emerged and led Ellie into a once secret hideaway of their now deceased friend Eugene. Through exploring and reading through Eugene's notes, it appears he was a firefly involved in some terrorism after he left his family and kids to pursue a mission he thought was bigger and greater than the individual. Although signs were shown, it's unknown if the fireflies will return. Ali and Dina stumbled upon Eugene's secret underground weed den. With nothing to do but waiting for the storm to pass, they settled on a couch and lit up. How would you? What happens after is unknown. Trailers suggest Dina dies not long after, but it could be an almost too obvious bait and switch. In a search of vengeance, Ellie's going after the Seraphites, a mysterious and dangerous cult. Members of the Seraphites practice a form of ritualistic sacrifice. They hang their sacrifices by the neck and disembowel them, believing that they are nested with sin. 
They can be recognized by their shared characteristics, like male members having a clean shaven head, where female members wear their hair in braided crown style. All members have a Glasgow smile, which is a scar on their cheek. Their attire, both men and women, wear dark pants, black shoes and dark trench coats featuring hoods. An example of the ritualistic sacrifice was seen when Emily, a member of the Seraphites, and her henchmen were hanging an unnamed woman. Rather than letting her die from rope strangulation, Emily prepared to gut the woman with her knife, until one of the apostates, their word for defectors, Yara arrived. Yara! Where is the other apostate? Clip her wings. Before the second henchman could beat her other arm, Lev Yara's brother eliminated one of the henchmen, while Yara and the unnamed woman took care of the rest. Ellie runs into another ritualistic sacrifice in another part of the game. A whistle sounds, it's one of the most common ways the Seraphites communicate with each other. They are patrolling the area in search of Ellie, nicknamed Wolf. Struggling after getting hit by a rifle as well as an arrow, Ellie still manages to take down the Seraphite patrol. Later in the game, during spring or summer, Ellie traveled to Seattle, Washington. Here she encounters the WF or Washington Liberation Front, a xenophobic militant group who have taken over the area, imprisoning or killing any and all trespassers. Other than humans, the WF featured dogs too. Them being able to follow your scent means you will have to stay on the move to prevent being discovered. Ellie is here looking for Tommy, who was seemingly in conflict with his local faction, and it's at this point Joel catches up with her. What the hell are you doing here? You think I'd let you do this on your own? 